What's good, guys? We're back at it again with another video. As you can see from the title today, we have a DJ Wagner versus Dylan Harper breakdown. We'll start off talking about Dylan Harper because we haven't seen him at all on the channel before. This is a 6'4 to 6'5 guard out of Jersey, just like DJ. And his name is one that I've seen on this channel, I don't know how many times over these last weeks, months. I feel like I even saw his name like four or five months ago. I've been meaning to make his breakdown, but as we know on this channel, I like to do breakdowns on full game film not highlights because I've never seen a player miss a shot in highlights. Everyone looks like a pro. Everyone looks amazing in the highlights. So I really want to see the full game film. We finally got some, so I'm really excited to put eyes on Dylan Harper for the first time. He's currently ranked number five in the class of 2024, according to 24-7. DJ Wagner is a player we've known about for a while. He has breakdowns all over the channel. He's been the number one player in the class of 2023, according to ESPN. For about two years now on 24-7, there has been movement. Isaiah Collier is the new number one. DJ, we already know this is a player who plays no games, not wasting dribbles. He's not wasting movement. He knows where his spots are and he knows how to get there. And he's going to attack you on the offensive end every single time down the floor. He's also an extreme competitor. And the way DJ plays translates to wins, whether that be with Camden or whether that be on the EYBL circuit with basically the same Camden roster. The way DJ Wagner plays has led to wins throughout his whole career. And I can't wait to see what he does at Kentucky. But this matchup between these two players, I'm extremely excited to see, especially to get my first eyes on Dylan Harper. Let's jump right into it. Dylan Harper loves working out of the pick and roll, taking the big out in space and attacking him one-on-one. -on -one. He also does a great job here finishing in the paint. He was extremely aggressive early into the game, using his change of pace to keep defenders off balance, which allowed him to get to his spots and knock him down. DJ's shot wasn't falling early, but he still showed that he can make reads in the half court. Again, watch how Dylan Harper attacks this big in the pick and roll. He did a great job getting downhill and drawing fouls. Harper also showed that he's not only effective going downhill, but he can knock down jumpers as well. DJ is known for being an extremely skilled guard that can get to his spots and knock him down. He was able to get there today, and even though he couldn't get them to fall, he was still effective on the offensive end by constantly attacking the rim. At 6'5", Harper can shoot right over the top of smaller guards, but he also understands how to use his size to his advantage while getting downhill. If he thinks he has a mismatch, he's not wasting any time punishing you in the paint. Late in the game, DJ and Dylan were able to show why they're such highly touted players. DJ on this possession with great defense, still figuring out a way to score with this tough floater. And on this next possession, Dylan in the pick and roll, showing his handle and ability to finish in the paint. Throughout these last couple clips, I just want you guys to notice the change of direction from DJ Wagner and how his relentless attack leads to wins, but also take note of the talent level of Dylan Harper because that's going to be a name everyone's going to be hearing for years to come. Okay, so we'll start with DJ. This is a player we've seen before, and he did actually get the win in this game. I just wanted you guys to notice that even when DJ Wagner's shot isn't falling, because remember, this is a player who is a scorer. He's trying to score. He's hunting his spots, and he's hunting his shots. So even when in a game that his shot isn't falling, he's trying to get to his mid-range pull-up, it's not falling for him. He's getting to his pull-up three. It's not falling. He's shooting his standstill threes. They're not falling either. He's even trying to get into the paint and finish in traffic, and a lot of his finishers weren't going down. He still found a way to still impact the game on the offensive end. Why? Because he was relentless. He didn't stop. It doesn't matter if my shots aren't falling. When I come down this floor, guess what? When I go left and dead dribble and I see you move a little bit, I'm still going to shoot the shot. If I come off a pick and roll and you go under or you hesitate, I'm still going to shoot it. In transition, if there's no one there to stop me, I'm going to shoot the ball regardless if it goes in or not. That's one thing that stood out to me while I was watching this game because if you guys noticed, Camden was down. And when I say down, I'm talking about 10 plus, 15 plus early in this game and DJ shots weren't falling. Aaron Bradshaw wasn't really hooping like that. So I'm watching it like, oh, did they actually lose this game? And over time, I just watched DJ and Camden make the right play after the right play after the right play, whether that be DJ getting into the paint, trying to finish, getting fouled, getting to the free throw line. He did a good job of that. Or when he does get those deep paint touches, he does play off of two feet, which allows him to pivot and kick out to his shooters. 
I watched everyone on that team make the right play and still compete offensively, defensively, and this is why as a team they were able to get back into the game. DJ started to get loose as the game moved towards the fourth, but I really just wanted to point out his change of direction. How, when he's going right, how violent it is when he chooses to go back the other way and how many times that leads to him getting wide open layups or he's getting fouled or he's getting a paint touch. And like I said, he plays off too. So it allows him to kick it out to his teammates, to his shooters, which lets them knock down shots. And this might not have been the greatest game I've ever seen DJ play. I told you he wasn't hitting shots. He was losing the ball a little bit, but I'm telling you just that relentless attack. It doesn't matter how many shots I miss. I'm still coming at you and I'm trying to give you these buckets and I'm not wasting a lot of my dribbles. I'm not playing around. I'm getting to my spots. Make or miss, I'm coming at you. Now we got to talk about Dylan. And I can honestly say, I see why so many of y'all wanted me to do a breakdown on this kid because for him to be 16 years old, playing against Camden, and keep in mind, this is one of the best high school basketball teams that there are because they not only have DJ, they have Aaron Bradshaw, who also could be the number one player in the class. This is a seven-footer who can knock down shots, block shots, and also finishes extremely well in the paint. And when I watch this 16-year-old get downhill and attack the paint time after time after time again, make sure you understand what I'm saying. He's playing against, attacking the paint against a five-star seven-footer who could be the number one player in 2023, just depending on who you ask. And I'm watching him finish against him, and I'm watching him finish in the paint. I'm watching him draw a foul almost every single time he touches the paint. It's either a foul or a finish. This is an extremely tough player. And it's not even just the finishing, it's the combination of the finishing and the ability to knock down jump shots set or off the bounce at 6'5", at 16 years old, while also understanding how to use his body and when not to play around. Because you'll see a lot of guards, and you see it with bigs too, they don't take advantage of their size. If it's a big man in the paint, maybe they don't want to go up strong. Maybe they want to shoot jump shots. Same thing with taller guards. They don't want to drive. They just want to shoot right over the defenders. Well, he does both. There's a smaller player on him. You saw him. He has no problem just raising up lefty, knocking it down. Or he'll put it down on the ground, get to two feet in the paint, and you're too small. You're not going to bother him. Easy layup. Honestly, just watching this game and watching some of the games he's played recently, it's the same thing. He's been consistent. That's why you've been seeing his name so much. Been seeing it on Twitter, YouTube, Instagram. I've been seeing the name Dylan Harper everywhere. It's because his combination of size, 6'5", Fluidity, watch how he moves with the ball in his hands. Handle, you guys saw what he did when he came off what should have been a ball screen action, came off, quick double tween, gather, and still finish in traffic and one. This is a player who's wired to score, wired to make plays. I really appreciate you guys commenting down his name because this name is going to be one you should be hearing a lot over these next couple years because he has all the tools, all the tools to be in that three-letter league one day. As it pertains to the class of 2024, I've seen a good amount of those players play live Trey Johnson's currently ranked number one, I think, across all platforms in that class. What I've seen from Dylan Harper, and I've seen Trey, and Trey's amazing. Trey's a crazy shot maker. But what I'm seeing from Dylan and from some of these other players in the class of 2024, there is going to be a battle for that number one spot. I'm going to tell you that. It's not going to be easy because similar to this 2023 class where there isn't a definite number one, it might end up just being who you ask as a number one player in the class of 2024. All in all, this was an extremely high-level matchup between two top five guards in their respective classes. They really competed on both ends of the floor, and I can't wait to see what both of these guys do in the future. Like, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications. I appreciate you guys watching. Remember, if you want the one-on-one -on -one evaluations or the breakdowns that get posted on the channel, hit my website, btiabasketball.com, in the description. Also, if you have any questions for me, need any advice, hit my link for Noodle in the description. I appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you guys next time for the next video.